Hi ladies, just wanted to um, do a video for you all to um, show you how I came up with the finished project for the canvas that I was working on for Barbie um, that you all saw me working on at the crop. I just want to give you a real quick background of how I did this. If you remember correctly, this thing was this ugly purple, pink, and you know what? That's not Barbie. That's not her colors in her house. And it's just not what I, I didn't like it. And if I didn't like it, I couldn't, certainly couldn't expect her to like it. So what I did is to help get rid of that purple, I took my homemade gesso. I'll put the recipe out there um, on the website and my paintbrush. And I just painted over that. I think I gave it um, maybe one coat, maybe two. Um, so I really didn't mind a little bit of the, the pink kind of became almost like a, uh, I don't know, it just kind of came through really cool. So anyway, I did that just to really dull down that awful pink color. Then I took my cream and my light brown acrylic paint. And I mixed it with some soft gel medium. And I also, I kind of found this in my stash. Um, and I also use this. Oops, which way here? It's called um, acrylic glazing liquid. And what this basically does is it helps extend the life of your paint. So what I would basically do is I would take the paint and put a dab here and a dab here. Uh, the, the glazing liquid and my gel. I just kind of get a little bit of the, get the paint, get the gel, get the glazing liquid. And I just started painting this over. And um, it came out beautiful. So like I said, those were, what I, those were the two colors that I used from my base um, over my gesso. Then using a little bit darker brown um, of the uh, acrylic, I then took my sponge, wet it so that it was, um, gave me more, you know, little texture things, dip it in my brown paint, and I would just start to add texture to it. Um, and the dark brown really, it almost gave it like a marbled effect and it was just beautiful. Just, just beautiful. Now in between each step, you need to dry it with your heat gun. You really, really, as you're adding different mediums to your, your canvases or your, um, your mixed media um, journal pages, you really want to make sure that these are good and dry. Um, the next thing I did was add some more texture on top of this. And what I used, um, and this was just a stencil. I'm sorry, it's not a stencil. It's a mask by Prima. Um, this particular mask, the item number is 560935. I don't know if you can see that. It glares kind of on there. Anyway, that is 560935, and that is a Prima mask. And what I just did was I took my texture paste and um, my homemade texture paste is a little bit thicker than you would find elsewhere. I like my texture paste thicker. Um, I like golden, but I find it to be a little bit too um, watery. So anyway, I took my texture paste, add a little bit of water to it with my handy dandy spray bottle that goes everywhere with me. And I added some more of the brown, okay, of the brown to that. And I also added to it the um, Perfect Pearls, all right, um, by Ranger. And this is the powdered. 
and it is the color was cappuccino. So I mix these two ingredients in with my um, texture paste, and um, I just used one of these, you know, just to really get it good and mixed. Um, really working with it. If I thought it was too dry, spray a little more water on there. Got that done. And then I would take my screen and I would lay it down and scoop some of this up. And like I said, you know, a credit card is a girl's best friend, but for mixed media, an expired credit card is even better. So anyway, I would scoop that up and just put that on here just randomly in random spots. I did want it all going the same direction. So um, careful to just keep that. Well, a little bit of the letters came through once in a while, but that's not a big deal. So I, again, just randomly went through that. When you're using a texture paste on your stencils or your masks, as soon as you're done, wash them because this, this will ruin your texture paste, will ruin your stencils and your masks quicker than you can shake a stick at because you know what? We pay money for these. We don't want to ruin them. So I usually keep a bucket near me. Just dump that puppy in the bucket and let it dry. I'm sorry. I wash it and then I clean it and then I let it dry. But now I've got this beautiful texture on here. And of course, once again, I've gone over with my heat gun to make sure it's good and dry. So let's see if you can see the different texture on that. Isn't that exquisite? It just adds a little something, something. Um, I really watched how dark I made it. I wanted it to be dark, but I didn't want it to, um, I wanted it to blend in, um, to be a little bit different, but then I, like I said, to blend in. Now, after all of this was said and done, and after all of this had dried, I then took my gel medium, okay, and another brush, probably not this one, but, and then I went over this whole thing to seal it. Because if I put any other mediums on here, I don't want it to reactivate or um, start making these colors move around. I want these to stay just the way they are. So again, like I said, I just sealed it really good. And I believe I put two coats on there. Just like I said, I wanted that baby really good and sealed. I then gave it a really good heat set. And to be honest with you, I let it set a day or two before I started doing anything more to it. Um, so that I knew that this was good and dry. Next thing I'd like to talk to you about, talk to you about are the wooden embellishments that I used. Um, I know I got this out at just a little bit more. I want to say they were Kaiser, but I could be wrong. Uh, but anyway, I loved them. I love flourishes. So let me tell you how I did this. First thing again, my favorite, I gessoed them because I want my color to stick evenly. So got my paintbrush out, gessoed them. Again, my heat gun dried them. Now I thought, you know, I really want some texture here that's kind of white. So then I took my liquid pearls and this is in white opal. Okay, can you see that? Sorry if it's not focusing real well, guys. White opal. All right, and then just using my finger, actually, I would I would dab it on, and then I would just take my finger to add some texture to it. All right. So after that dried, I then um, used these three different colors on here. I started out with the... Um, 
These are Inca Gold Metallic Rubs. And of course, you know, they don't have the colors on them. Hmm. Just as a splash of color. I'm sorry, I apologize. This is Old Silver. And it's by Viva. So I then took this and just getting my finger a little wet. Whoa. You can see. I just get my finger a little wet, get in here, and then I would just dab it thick enough that it would cover everything. And I would do that. I did that on all three. I then, using the same process, um, just use a touch of the gold. And this is gold. It's a very yellow gold. And again, I would kind of do that, not in every not everywhere but just kind of spotty and then last but not least um, same thing and this is copper and I went through and as you can see hopefully the camera will do this justice it gave it um, a little bit of that vintagey um, old world look to it a little bit. So I did that to all three of these using all of those. Once it had dried, well not even dried, but remember if you add water to these, if water comes in contact with any of these, it's going to um, smudge it all up. So I wanted it kind of glossy, so I then painted over it with my glossy accents. So that's how I took care of these. Now this is the bird cage that I've also used on here and I use the exact same process um, as I did with the flourishes. The only difference was that um, one of the underlying tones that I used on this was a steel blue. Oops, upside down, sorry girls, steel blue. One of the other embellishments on the page is this beautiful table. And it's just a chipboard table. What I did, using three different colors, I used my, my green, my blue, and my, oops, let's get these in frame. My blue, my yellow, my green, mix them together on um, my craft mat until I got the exact color teal that I was looking for. Once I achieved that, I then painted this teal. After that, well, actually before, actually before I painted it teal, it was gessoed. Um, so then again, like I painted it teal, and then using the exact same techniques as on the other ones, I then applied my different um, metallic rubs, uh, with the exception of I don't think I used the blue on this. So, and then after that dried, oh, you know what else I did on this? I added some crackle stickles. And I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up, but you can actually see some of the cracks in there where um, it, it crackled. And actually, I believe I used the crackle before I put the metallic rub on there. So... After I finished all that, um, I then, on this one as well, I used my glossy accents um, to add uh, a little bit of gloss to these and to also seal them. So that way they're all ready to go. Okay, now ladies, as you can see, we have my canvas back. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue uh, my flourishes onto my canvas using my Fabri-Tac glue because this holds everything down. And oh, ladies, when you're storing your Fabri-Tac, get a paper towel holder. Stick that in there. Make sure your cap's on so it doesn't leak everywhere. 
just let you get to your glue easier. So let's get to gluing these pieces on. Okay, now that my doilies are on nice and tight and they're all nice and dry, I'm going to start shading around my flourishes with um, a watercolor pencil. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Okay, now that I've got all of my shading done around all my flourishes, and you can see I've already done the table here, I'm just going to go in with my water brush and just lightly. I'm not going to be real crazy about it. I'm just going to go in and kind of shade that water, that watercolor pencil in just to kind of highlight my flourishes. Okay. I finished blending my pencil using my water brush and now I'm going to go ahead and just give a quick coat of um, matte gel medium over the over these areas here just to seal that in so that if should I decide to add any more layers or this definition won't run at all. Okay, now it's time to start assembling our birdhouse. We have our nest and our birdcage. And now we're going to go ahead and glue, glue those on using Fabri-Tac. Okay, I've got that glued on with my birdcage and my bird's nest here that I made out of cheesecloth and uh, a little bit of spray. So now it looks like there's a little nest in there. I think it needs a little more on top so I'll fiddle with that as we go along. 
Now I believe it's time to start putting on our flowers.
Okay, friends, well, here's my finished canvas. Um, I think it turned out beautiful. I'm going to try and zoom in here so you can see some of the um, the different corners that I did here. I did add some butterflies on here with a little bit of bling on them. And instead of putting a bird on the bird cage, I put a butterfly because I wanted to. Who says you have to put a bird in a bird cage? Um, you put anything you want. And that's what I wanted. So let me zoom in on this and then I promise I will try not to make you seasick so that you can see a little bit more detail. And I'm going to move this over like that. Let's see if I can't pick this up for you. There we go. Timeless. Just like our friendship with Barbie and Dennis, it's timeless. And then on this corner, that's right above my husband's head, <laughs> I think this turned out really pretty as well. And then in the bottom corner, we have our butterfly with our bouquet at the bottom with a little love medallion there. But didn't that just turn out beautiful? Just beautiful. And there's my uh, there's my uh, butterfly nest. <laughs> Put this back down and I'll zoom it back out so y'all can see it. There we go. My table's crooked, so it's hard to keep the that crooked. It's crooked for you, it's straight for you and crooked for me. <laughs> anyway, this is my canvas. It's a birthday gift for my best friend, my best friend Barbie, who's right there. And this was a night out. We hadn't had a double date in a very long time. And uh, her birthday's coming up. And I thought, what a perfect way to celebrate her birthday and say thank you very much for your friendship. And uh, friends help make great memories. And they absolutely do. And uh, so happy birthday, Barbie. And I hope everyone enjoys this. And I hope it inspires you to create something. If I can do it. You can do it. Have a great night, everybody.